So we need to graph this inequality. We just need to show on a graph what they're saying x can be. <coughs> Since it's only one variable, just x, then we'll just uh, use one thing in graph, one line. Uh, here's 0, here's 2. We need to show that x can be less than 0, so let's deal with that. An open circle and it's not equal to 0, and then the arrow going to the left. This thing that I'm shading, what's that made of? All the points. All the points. Yeah. All, the points. All the points represent the value of x. So it could be anything here. Uh, then it needs to be bigger than 2. So by the same reasoning, open circle and shade were bigger than Uh, so we're going to solve this. Really, this is just two inequalities that have been mushed together, the same ink, because x minus 3 can't be between 2 and 6. It can be bigger than 2 and less than 6. We're going to scribble that out realize that that's one of the inequalities. If I want to solve this inequality, what would I do? Plus three. Plus three. Plus three. What if, uh, let's, what if we were solving that inequality? Plus three on both sides. So we're just by, by writing it this way, all, all I'm doing is writing two inequalities Less ink. So I'm solving both of them at the same time because I'm going to do the exact same things to get x by itself. I'm going to add 3 or divide by something, multiply by something, uh, exactly the same way in both inequalities. So why don't we just do it both of them at the same time? So we get 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 9. Questions? Then we will go back over to 55. So the lowland zone, that would be this zone right here. We just want to find an inequality that represents those elevations. Where are these elevations? Between 0 and 500. What does 0 mean? 0 was the standard for 0. Sea level. Sea level. Sea level is the standard for 0. OK. Uh, so. I'll use the letter E for elevation. That elevation needs to be bigger than or equal to zero, but less than 500. Why not less than or equal to 500? It says not to assume the higher elevation. Yeah, the lower includes the lower elevation, not the higher elevation. Just the wording of that problem. Let's write an inequality for elevations Alpine and subalpine zones. So this would be alpine, this would be subalpine. So we like these two connected regions. So it can be between the lowest of the low one and the highest of the high one. Those elevations are from, where do they start? So it's gotta be bigger than 1400, or bigger than, or, or, or equal to 1400 but less than 24.29. And this is right inequality for elevations not in the montane zone. Not in the montane zone. So that would be any of these elevations, or this is you get grab another color. Yellow. So 
So any of these or any of these. And if you think about really including any of these. lower even than the lowlands and even higher than the alpine zone is still not in the montane zone, right? So we can include those. So what are the elevations that are lowlands and below? 500 and below. 500 and below. So if E is less than 500, or if we go over here, it needs to, E needs to be bigger than or equal to 1,400. We can include the low one, but we don't want to include the, the upper, the higher. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Ask if you got questions, but uh, if you don't, then let's pass it on more. As you're passing it in, you're getting ready. This is what we call a compound inequality because it's actually two inequalities. Uh, this part is represented by one inequality and by another. What kind of inequality is this? An and or an or? Or. or? or. So this part of it, how do we represent that with an inequality? Why how do we know it's not equal to? Circle group. Um, for the first one, would negative two less than x greater than four work? So just no or negative two. And then less than x and then greater than four. Well, no, because x is not supposed to be bigger than negative 2, right? Right. x is supposed to be less. Okay. So at least for that reason, it's not correct. Okay. Even if we had negative 2 and it was like uh, this way, that really isn't correct because there's nothing you can put here that will be true sandwiched between those values. If I choose something that's less than two, like I put negative three, well, right, if I just look at this part of it, it makes sense. Negative three is less than negative two, but then I look on this side, negative three is not bigger than four. Right? So there's not anything that you can just put right there for that value of x. You really do need or. If it were shaded in between two numbers, then, then that would make sense with different numbers, right? The negative two and four, and, and Six is greater than or equal to x, and now we're going to graph it. When you graph these in general, I would like to see a zero somewhere. It doesn't have to be right in the middle, but somewhere to give me an idea that you understand where positive six is <coughs> on the number line, and that you kind of have an idea of the scale, and how far away it is. So uh, let's see, that's going to be six. So we're looking at six here. We'll go back zero. So at six, do we put an open or a closed circle? Closed. Closed, because it is okay if it is equal to six. And we want to go <laughs> x is less than that as well. Okay. Forward. We can solve this inequality. You're going to figure out what value of x. Uh, values of x are okay. You're going to subtract 11 from both sides, just like you would with an equation. If that were an equal sign, it treats exactly the same. Negative 4 i by 8, where x is greater than or equal to. Now, 
write down what it is here. I divide it by eight. Now, it's not uncommon for someone to then switch the direction of the inequality. Should we do that? No, we shouldn't. But did you see how someone would think we're supposed to? Maybe get confused? Or did they say did they might get confused? Negative on that side because we have to like. When we're dividing, and the rule says like if we divide by a negative, right? And then we switch or we multiply by a negative. So this four is negative, isn't it? So since there's a negative involved and I'm dividing, my brain might say, oh, those are the conditions for switching the inequality sign. But it's if we're dividing by eight. So if the, if the eight was negative, that, that would be where we just switch the sign. It's not as positive. Even though that negative four, or that four is negative, it's not the rule. So we divide by a negative to switch the sign. This one is you know, x's on both sides, and we have uh, parentheses and stuff like that. What if I did this first? I wonder if anybody has ever in this room has ever done that at some point, and maybe has learned better of it. Because there's this agreed upon order of operations where we do parentheses before we do almost well, yeah, before we do anything else. Okay, and so if I just ignore these parentheses, like they're not there at all, and I just subtract x, then I'm ignoring that they're in parentheses, and I'm multiplying by two. Yes. Sorry. I did. Just, this is okay. not, just like a minute ago. Okay, that's why. Okay. okay, can you take it closer to the bound sign? Yeah. Please? Thanks. Um, okay. So, first I need to do what? Distribute the 2, 2x two minus 8 greater than <coughs> 4 plus 6. I'm going to force uh, 6 to use this, to have to switch the sign. So I'm going to subtract 4x. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to subtract 2x. Okay. Yeah. Divide by negative two. So now I'm actually dividing by a negative number. So that's when I would switch the sign. X is less than negative seven. <coughs> and if I had done it in such a way that I subtract two x from both sides instead of subtract four x from both sides, it'd be the same relationship. X would still be on the smaller side, and negative seven would still be on the larger side. I'd still, we say the same thing about x. Any questions about that? All right, pass it in. Or pass it back and just pass it in. Get back into uh, graphing inequalities. Well, get out your notes. And then <coughs> graph this graph. Uh, I, hopefully, what I'm about to say sounds like, a, like I'm sounding like a broken record because you recognize it as something I have said so many times. But you really will benefit from, see, from seeing a graph for what it is. So when I draw this graph, what will it be? What will it represent? What will it mean? Be a line. Be a line. Okay, let's start with what will it be made out of? How many? Billions. Trillions. Billions and trillions. And every one of these billions and trillions of points, what does it represent? Input and output. Okay, let's draw this line. Let's draw all of these points and talk about it a little bit more. Um, so we'll go ahead and use the slope. One, two, three, four, five, and over seven. So the next point would be right there. Hopefully we don't. That is not the sum total of our knowledge of how to graph a line. Hopefully our, our goal isn't even to know how, <coughs> the word how being the key word. 
to graph a line, but what a line is, what each point represents, how I could find this point like directly from this equation, right? This is not the next point, but just the next easiest point to find if we plug seven in for x, because if we plug in seven for x, we cancel out that denominator, and now we don't have fractions to deal with, okay? We've talked about that quite a few times. Okay, so then we're gonna connect them. What I've drawn is uh, not so much a line, but a bunch of points, an infinite number of points. And so like this point, this point is at seven negative two. And as Brennan said, that represents an input and an output. Right? Okay. Nine, nine. Oh, anybody? Riley? From earlier, way earlier. What? No, not if it's like a class, like, it's like it's so easy that everybody just says it. Oh. Okay. Take a little bit of, I think it's maybe a newer concept that somebody has uh, caught hold of. And, uh, that anyway, so I put in seven and I get out negative two. In seven, out negative two, right? Seven for x, negative two for y. Another way to look at it, it's almost exactly the same, but it's just slightly different. If I take seven and I put it in here for x, and then I take this negative two and I just plug it in for y, like I don't wait to see what y is, I just put that in for y, then, well, what will happen? And then it would be equal on each side. Yeah, it would be equal on both sides. It would be true. It would be true. Like this equation would be true. Does that make sense? It's an equation. And this equation, well, it should be true. Like, if it's not true, then it's kind of useless. But it's either true or it's false. If both sides are equal, it'll be true. And if one side is not equal to the other side, it will be false. And it will be true, absolutely true, if we choose points from the equation. If I look at this graph, what? This, these points represent this function, yeah? If I want both sides to come out equal, where will I find points that will make both sides equal? On that line. On that line. On that line. If I choose points from on the line, and I put those that x and that y into the equation, both sides will be the same, right? Mm -hmm. Both sides will be the same. So if I choose this point, I put in seven for x and negative two for y, both sides will be equal. If I put in zero for x and three for y, both sides will be equal. If I choose any other point on this line, and I put that x and that y into the equation, both sides will be equal. Yes? So any function that's technically equal is on the line? What you mean exactly? So if you've got, like even just x equals the number, anything where there's an equal sign, it's always going to end up as a line. Oh, all graphs are lines? No, um, all like functions or formulas that have an equal sign in them, wouldn't they all technically turn out to be a line and a straight line? Well, just be able to be any line on the graph. You go like this. <coughs> well, any of them. Would any, every formula be either a graph or a point? Like, like okay, so every, every equation like this, or just any equation that has an equal sign in it and a variable, would it always end up, could you always put it on a graph? Yeah. The answer is yes. That's it. That's a good, I mean, that's, that's good to know. It's really good to know, good to say, good to recognize that any equation that we have variables in that equation, and we find all of the, what we call solutions, all of the values of x and y that make the two sides equal, and then we put them on a graph, like we plot them as points, and we start to get that shape. Yeah, they'll all, we'll all be able to make a graph, make a shape. Um, and the thing that I was kind of trying to, I didn't want to lead you on and like tell you the answer, I wanted to see what you were saying. They're not always going to be a straight line. Yeah, they just always be able to be plotted as plotted, yes. a line. As long as it's just y and x, or q and r, or p and 
t, like whatever the two variables are, as long as it's in two variables, then yeah, we can graph it right over here. Might not be very easy to do some of them, but it's still possible. Okay, okay, so this is a good question. Um, so, any point that we pick from the line, well, I mean, the line is made of all these points, points that make the equation true. So if I pick a point from on the line, uh, and plug in that x and that y, it'll make the equation true. Okay, so let's look at this point. Let's look at this point, seven, negative two. If I plug in seven right here, if I plug in seven here, what will this turn into when I combine everything together? Negative five plus three. Negative five plus three for a total of? Negative two. Negative two. Negative two. Negative two. We know that because, well, that point, for one thing, that point tells us that. That point tells us that. It will come out to be negative two. Now, let's talk about this point. In seven comma, let's just even ignore what the y is exactly, some y value. If I, plug, if I take the seven and I put it in for x, what will I get here? Good, negative two, still negative two, even though I picked this point. When I plug in seven, it's still going to be negative two. There's, there's nothing, there's no reason why it wouldn't be. If it was negative two a second ago, it'll still be negative two when I plug in seven. But when I plug in this y value, this y value, will the equation be true? No. No, because it, well, the y needs to be negative two in order for, in order for it to be true. In order for it to be true. So it'll be less than or equal. Well, what we'll say for now is that y value, whatever it is, it's less than negative two. Okay. It's less than what you would get on this side if you plugged in seven. It's, it's so that would be a, it's not on the line. It's not equal because it's not on the line. So it would be a point in inequality? Well, <coughs> if you wanted to write something that would include that point, it's a little too tricky to uh, have another line where, yeah, it would be inequality. Okay. What if I pick this point down here? And it's still seven and some other y, will it make the two sides equal? Will it make no. the equation true? No. no, because always when I plug in seven, I'll get negative two. And if I choose a point that doesn't have a y of negative two, but it has an x of seven, it won't work in that equation. But how does that y value compare to what I, what I, what I would get over here? Less than. It would be less than. So would like these points work in this? Yeah, all those points would make this true. All those points would make that true. Okay. Well, I just picked this point because it's nice. It has whole number of values, and it's easy to talk about them. But wouldn't it work for any point? Even if I pick one that's like got fractions? Yeah. It would still be true that if I pick any point below this point, I'll put in this x, and I'll get out this y right here. If I pick any other point below that, the y will be less than what it's supposed to be if, it want, if you want it to be equal, right? So then all those points would work also in this inequality. And any point that's below a point on the line, all these points below that point, below that point, they'll work in this inequality. So any point, now I'm gonna shade all of the points, all of these points down below the line for infinity to the left, to the right, to the below, all over, essentially half of the plane, which would be where they get half of the but that part of it, all of those points, those are all the points that work in this. And which points work in the equation? The line. The, line. the points on the line. The points on the line work in the equation. So if you just include the shaded part, it's that mm -hmm. inequality, if you include the line, it's that equality. Yep. But then if you include the line and the under shaded part, you get less than or equal to. That's right. <coughs> Conclusion made. So he just drew the, the Brennan just drew the conclusion for us. If we include both of those things, the equals two part is the line, the less than part is the shaded area. Right. So let's see if that is, is taking hold for everybody and it's making sense. This graph line is greater than oh, that's why you shaded it on the, 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 the what? Yeah. Like why you shape the 
a circle then? Mm -hmm. I think you're making like, an interesting point. What are you saying? Like on the other kind of graph, that's why you shade the circle. Because it's you think you're greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. Yeah, this is the less than part. That's like the shade yeah, area of like on the plane. The plane. Okay. And then this is the equal to part. That's like the line. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, I need to get an egg. But first, I'm going to go back here and have you graph this. <coughs> equals two part, that will be the line. We'll take care of that. That's to be the easiest way to start, right? It gives us a cutoff for where the shaded area should end. We'll begin. So it's got a y intercept of five, and a slope of negative four thirds. What's that? Okay, so on your line, when you graph it like that, if you look at just the y-intercept, which is the constant at the end, and then you look at the um, y part of the graph, it makes an inequality line that we have because then the line above it, since it's greater than or equal to, is also shaded, and the point is not dashed. So, uh, well, let's say that we know yeah. we're going to shade above it. Yeah. Okay, just for that reason. Well, let's shade all of it. Now, I have tried to teach it that way to start, and it just, I don't know, it, it confuses people. But I think it's pretty, it's pretty cool what you said. Um, let me use this guy right here. Okay, so what he's saying is, forget about all of this stuff. Let's just concentrate on this line right here. Just concentrate on this line. Oh my God, Brennan. Right? And this, this y-axis, it's a, it's a vertical number line. Right? And that is exactly what the xy plane is. It's just two number lines put perpendicular to each other. Yeah? Very well done. In fact, Brennan, the first three Three pointers. Of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta chime in, that's all. So yeah, exactly. That I mean that if you concentrate on the y-axis itself, it looks just like the number line inequalities that we have done. Uh, also, if you think about it, I don't know if I can do this or not. Um, we can do the same thing with the x-axis. Right? There is an x-intercept. And there oh, yeah. is shading there. So there is something to say about it. Now, this, this vertical axis here, okay, that's the way to go. I think you get the idea from that. Uh, that number line, that vertical number line, is just when we let x be 0, right? Yeah. If we have to get rid of all the other x's other than x is 0, so we just erase that, that would be y is greater than or equal to 5, just done vertically. And if we let y be equal to 0 and then solve for x, we'll get this guy right here, this number line, x is bigger than or equal to something. So on like the number line graph, so we could do like the or and have the shading of won't anytime soon. That's what we call a system of inequalities, where I can give you this one, right? And I can give you another one. Let's make it up. Less than or equal to three fourths x minus twelve. I can graph that guy, right? And it looks something like this. It's less than, so we shade it down here. Okay. And just depending on what we say, should it be and or should it be or? Usually it's and. 
you always want to find where these things, like the values of x that work in both of them. So it'll pretty much always be an and. So we'd find all of the overlap, which would be uh, this shaded area. That, not that, because that only works for one of the, the inequalities. Not this stuff, that only works for the, the second inequality over here. But everything on this line, and this line right here, and the overlapping shaded area works for both. So that'd be like what you said, the compound uh, inequalities. But, like I said, that's a system of inequalities. We won't be worrying about that for a little while. But it's a good point. It's a good comment. Um, um, all right, so let's go ahead and, uh, and I want you to think about what Colin said here as we go on to this next thing. He said, the line, if you think back to the, just the number line, the line is like the dot we would make, and it would be closed or it would be open. And then the shaded area is like the shaded area. Right? We would put a circle or we would put a filled in circle, and we would shade. Well, that's exactly the same idea as what we're doing here, only it's in two dimensions. We have two number lines perpendicular to each other, so we're looking at two values. Right? And instead of a dot that's filled in or it's, it's open, we have a line that is, well, well, let's think about that once we get there. Look at. Let's take the equals part out. Let's just go with y is less than uh, is, is, is. Come up with something that uh, represents that. If we go back to the first one we did, uh, remember what, what Brennan made a point of. He, he, he said. So the equals part is the line, and the less than part is the shaded area. That's true. And the thing is, in this case, we only have a shaded area. <coughs> we don't have a line. Just go. Let's look at y. Here, I'll just go ahead and graph the line, and we'll see why we shouldn't graph the line. Here we go. So negative 4 y intercept, and up 5 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There, there, draw the line. Go. What does this line represent? And those points, when I put them into x and y, what will happen to both sides? Is that cool? No, no, that's not cool. It can't be equal. Both sides can't be equal to each other. So all the points on this line, do they work? No. No, none of them work. Exactly none of them work. Okay? <coughs> but they're right on the edge of the values that do work. Like if I pick this point right here, hopefully it's clear that's just barely below this point. Will that point work? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because that y value is just below 1. Right? And if I plug an 8 there, uh, let's see. Yeah, if I plug an 8, I'll get 5 minus 4, that's 1. So I don't, I don't want it, y to be 1, because that'll be equal. That won't be good. I need y to be less than 1. That point, this point, this point, this point, all of this stuff is what works. But the stuff on the line doesn't work. But I kind of need the line to be a border, a fence, telling me this is the end of the shaded area. Is that where like the dotted line? That's where the dotted line comes in. It's almost like, like that's why I wanted you to think about what Colin said earlier, where the number line we would have, if there was like a not equals it's to, on, it's over. Yeah. So the dotted line is like the, the line version of an open circle. Yeah. It's almost like this line is made of open circles, not closed circles. So should you put your point like on the line in an open circle? Technically, yeah. You should. So like that should be an open circle. This should be an open circle. And all of the points that make up this line should be an open circle. That's kind of hard to show, right? Yeah. So we'll let. We'll kind of do a, a line version of an open circle, uh, and we will just leave it dotted. That will give us, that will be like code for everything up to the line is good, and everything on the line is not good. Everything on the line does not work, because everything on the line, if you plug in those x and y, both sides will be equal to each other. But we don't want them to be equal, we want them to be unbalanced. We want the y side to be less. So we'll pick the y's that are below the line. 
And I want you to think, for the most part, like almost always, if we're given an inequality like this, will be y on one side and like uh, mx plus b on the other side. That's how it will be set up like almost all the time. Um, so I want you to think, since it's set up like that, I want you to think, which y values do I want to include? These ones up here? Well, not in this case, because those are the y values that are bigger than the y values on the line. I want the y values that are less than the y values on the line. So they meet up here. Rather than on the left or on the right. People really feel tempted just to think, do I shade on the left or the right? Well, this is to the right of that line, but it makes more sense to shade above or below. Could be a little more discreet about a text. So we want to shade below. So I want you to think of above or below. Should we say above or below? Below. below. Okay. Rather than left or right. But it's not always the best way to think about it. Let's, let's look at a situation where you might want to think about it differently. Ooh. Let's say, uh, let's just say greater than. So I gave you the little idea to think about the graph when this is an equal sign. That graph would be a line. We, I mean, we just did this on a, on a quiz. We graph uh, a line like this. Since I know it's going to be a line, how many points do we need to find at least? Two. Just two. And we need to find two. Now if I draw this line, I'm going to be finding all the x and y values that make both sides the same as each other. I don't want that. I should think about, well, I don't want to include these points, but they, it certainly seems like they should be a helpful cutoff for where the shaded area is going to be. What's the easiest way to find two points with this kind of an equation? Oh, I just put it back into the regular y intercept form. Oh, you, OK. So you just yeah. solve for y and put in y intercept form. So yeah, well, you got the equation. y is greater than negative, negative 2 thirds plus 12 thirds. Yeah. Yeah. OK, fine. When you take 12 divided by 3. Uh, but I'm going to try. So is that wrong? No, it would be right. But what's another way we could think about it? would be an easy way to just go from this form to finding two points. Plugging 0 for one of the variables and then solve, and then plugging 0 for the other one. 0 for x and 0 for y. Put in 0 for x, it just looks like that. So we get y is 4. Put in 0 for y. Divide by 2, we get x is 6. Done. I think I'm done before you put it in self intercept form and then graph the y intercept and plot the slope. 0, 4. <coughs> 1, 2, 3, 4. This is a point that would be on this line. That would be an x and a y that makes it equal. I don't want to include that. So I'll just be real technical. I'll put an open circle. I'm not going to include that. Uh, 6, 0. Put another open circle. And I'll connect them with a dotted line. So those are the, all the values kind of splitting the plane in half. And uh, that's the cutoff for values of x and y that make both sides equal to each other. So this is kind of crazy, but can you have a parabola as an inequality? Sure. Uh, for any function, strict function, um, yeah. So I can't, you can't have a graph that like kind of goes back over itself. You could draw a vertical line through two parts of it. Uh, as long as you can't do that, as long as you can't draw a vertical line like that, it's just a straight function, then yeah, you could have an inequality for any function. Because really, most functions are written as y is equal to a big expression with lots of x's in it y is equal to 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Right? Well, pick any x, plug it in, you'll get a y value. Now if we're looking at an inequality where y is bigger, y is greater than, then you want all the y values that are, that are above that point. And for every point, whatever point is on the graph, I want all the y values that are up here, because I want the y values to be bigger than in okay. the, when I would get yeah. it they were equal. Um, now in this case, like when it's written this way, it's kind of hard to tell. You know, do I pick a 
above or below, because it's not y is greater than or y is less than like it was before. But one side of this is going to be shaded and the other is not. I mean, if this is shaded and this is not. You just kind of have to decide where is it. The shaded region is made of a bunch of points, an infinite number of points. It's made of an infinite number of points. Each one of those points makes this inequality true. So in reality, like one of these regions is shaded. We're just kind of blind to it right now. We can't see it, but we can kind of test for it. Right? Maybe this point is in the shaded region. Maybe it's not. If it is, then all of this area must be shaded. If it's not, this must be shaded. How can I figure out if this is in the shaded region or not? Plug it in. Plug it in. What do you think about that point? Is that a good idea for a point? No. Well, it's a good I idea. It's easy to solve for. Yeah. Well, or there's only one ease. There's only zero. Yeah, it's really zero? Good. Zero? Zero plus zero is? Zero. Zero. Is zero greater than 12? No. No. Let it up. no. So this must be from the empty space. This must be the filled in space over here. And of course that'll work any time, any, for any graph that we graph. I could have done that here. I can choose this point, zero, zero. Plug it in there, zero, 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 there, zero, there. Zero is less than negative four, is that true? Is zero less than negative four? No. No, it's not, that point fails. So I must shade over here. Here, same thing will happen. If I test zero, zero, I know because I've already shaded, it's gonna fail. Zero and zero, is zero bigger than five? No. Zero, this is zero, zero bigger than, no it's not, it's, this is not the shaded region, that point's not from the shaded region, it must be this area in the shaded region. You could just plug in zero and kind of see what As long as it's not actually on the line. Yeah. If the line goes through the origin, you're still gonna be Then you need to kind of, it's not yeah. gonna be that, one of them could be zero. And you could do like one, one, not one, the other one. True, one, one. In that case. One, How do you feel about inequalities in two variables? Inequalities in two, var two variables. I'm glad you feel decent about it. Okay, now let's go on to absolute values. Who, who knows what absolute value means? In between two lines. Okay, those are, that's the symbol for absolute yeah, value. Yeah. What's your absolute value of eight? Eight. What's the absolute value of negative eight? Eight. Okay, so we get it. Yeah. The basics. It's uh, the definition would be it's it's distance down. from zero. Distances we measure as positive. I just move the distance to the positive distance. Back backwards. How about what? Before we like go on from the line thing, can you graph like the ors where x is greater than three or x is less than <coughs> negative three? I'm not. What are you saying? So when we were graphing the lines, we just had like x is. We had y. You mean the number line, like just straight number line, like this? Yeah. No, the actual okay. graph. We uh -huh. had shaded below the line. Uh -huh. So if you have, you have the or, so you have one that's shaded below, and then a blank spot, and then one that's shaded above. Oh, sure. If we if we said, is Braxton, you asked this, or did Colin? I, I you asked about know. the or and the and. No, oh, no, yeah. that is. Yeah. So you asked about the yeah. having two inequalities, and I said, yeah. we'll almost always ask the question, what x is work for the and. We could use the or, it would just be like, um, it would be, it would be yeah, all of the shaded area. Even the part that's overlapping. <coughs> Blank spot, but the blank spot would be like a like a wedge oh, that okay. wasn't okay, shaded. Yeah. But the 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 half that's shaded for one, the half that's shaded for the other would all be would be included. Okay. Because you put that or there, it means I can pick anywhere I want, here or there or there. Or there. Or for both of them, that works too. Yeah. All right. That word or is key. How about if I say that x, the absolute value of x, is equal to four? What could x be? Negative four or four. I'll just put a comma there. It could be either one of those. Okay. I'm really getting mad. If 
If I say the absolute value of some unknown number, it's four, and I'm, I, I'm not sure what that number is. I'm not sure, I do, but I do know when I see the absolute value of it, I get four. So it's like four. positive, negative, positive, or negative. Plus. We can do that, we can do plus or minus four. That is also a way that we can say that x is plus or minus four. Those are valid. That's true for any absolute value. Like if I set it an absolute value like x plus 3 is equal to 10, we'll, we'll guess and check right now and, and then we'll progress past it. Like what could x be so that this would work? Seven. All right, that'd be the easiest one because we like to think in positives. But what else could it be? Negative 7. So negative 7. Negative 7? 13. 13. 13. 13, because when I subtract this from that, I need it to come out to be negative uh, 10. What we've really done, without maybe thinking about it uh, explicitly this way, we said x plus 3 could come out to be 10, so I subtract 3 and get 7, or x plus 3 could come out to be negative. The stuff in the absolute value function could come out to be negative 10 or positive 10, and when we solve both of these, we get x is 7, x is negative 13. That sounds good. I mean, that, if you just take that to heart, that the absolute value is equal to something, then the stuff inside the absolute value could be equal to positive or negative. Positive or negative. Let's give that a try. 3x plus 9 equal to 4. So solve for x. Find all the solutions for x. Right, so if all of this stuff is 4, and the absolute value of 4 is 4. And if all of this stuff uh, comes out to be negative 4, and I plug in some x and I do all that stuff and it comes out to be negative 4, and I take the absolute value of that, then that will also be 4. So I can say that 3x plus 9 equals 4, or 3x plus 9 comes out to be negative 4. If either one of those things happens, then this equation will be true. So subtract 9 from both. 3x equals negative 5, x equals negative 5 thirds. 3x equals negative 13, x equals negative 13 thirds. How many solutions would you expect to find for each uh, absolute value equation? Two. 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 One where it's equal to positive, one where it's equal to negative. Once I start to take stuff out of the absolute value, it kind of messes with what this will be worth. Because when I, when I subtract the 3 inside the parentheses, or inside the absolute value, it can come out to be a positive number or a negative number. Uh, this is the same distance from 0. But if I just ignore the 3 part, then it messes with it. Which means you probably couldn't add, subtract 4x from either side either. Exactly. We can't change the stuff inside the absolute value. But what we do know is that the absolute value, the stuff inside the absolute value can come out to be positive something or negative something. Only this time it's not equal to 4. So it would equal to be something x. Negative 4. Yeah, it would be something times 4x. Would it come out to be 2x minus 4? Uh, well, here's, here's how we'll, we'll deal with it. Here's how we'll deal with it. Um, when I plug a number in for x on this side, this, there's some value of x, or maybe two values of x that work in, in, this, uh, in this equation. When I plug that value of x in here, I get a number, right? So that would be some number. And, and that number needs to be positive. Now all this stuff needs to be is to be the same as this number, right? So you would just delete the x. Delete them? 
Could you? No. No, when I plug in here, X, please. When I plug stuff into this X, into this M, and this X, and, well, it needs to be the same thing, first of all. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, either 2X minus 3 needs to come out to be identical to what 4X minus 1 is, right? It's a positive number. Or, when I do this, it doesn't come out to be exactly the same as this. It comes out to be the opposite of this. And that's it. We've set up the two equations. This one just needs a distributive and negative before we can really do anything. But it can come, they can come out to be exactly the same, and as long as this is positive, of course. They can come out to be exactly the same, or this can be the opposite of this. Because the 4x minus 1 part, that's going to be the same no matter what. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So this can be either equal to exactly what 4x minus 1 is, or the opposite of what 4x minus 1 is. Because I'm going to take the absolute value of this, then it'll be positive. Right? Okay. It, it's the same thing. We always are going to take the absolute value stuff, it's inside the absolute value, set it equal to positive right side of the equation and equal to negative right side of the equation. Now we'll solve this. So this subtract 2x. 2x, 3 equals 2x minus 1, 2x equals negative 2, x is equal to negative 1. Right? Unless you catch a mistake, make a mistake. Negative and minus. Uh, here I'll do almost exactly the same thing, I just need to distribute this negative first. <coughs> Well, I'll add 4x. I get 6x minus 3 equals 1. 6x equals uh, 4. I add 3 to both sides. x equals 4 sixths. Sometimes the, the value for x that we find just doesn't play well with the original equation. It's what we would call an extraneous solution. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes it will happen that we'll find two solutions, but only one works. So I'll pick the one that I know is not going to work right here, and we'll, I think we'll quickly see why it doesn't work. We'll just plug it in for x into the original equation. Absolute value of 2 times negative 1 minus 3. 4 times negative 1 minus 1. Can anybody tell me right away why this couldn't possibly be true? Because this will be negative. We're going to subtract a 1. Yeah, so you can't have a negative absolute value. You can't take the absolute value of something and wind up with a negative. This side's going to be negative 5. How can I take the absolute value of something? It doesn't matter what's inside the absolute value. It'll never come out to be negative. It's almost the definition of absolute value. It's always positive. So that can't work. And that's why it would not work. That's why it would be what we call extraneous, because it causes this side to be negative when it, this couldn't possibly come out to be negative. Will that happen with this guy right here, 2 thirds? Well, it'll be 4 times 2 thirds, as long as that's bigger than 1. Yeah. And I can't subtract 1 and get negative. Then it should be 4 times 2 thirds bigger than 1. Yeah. It's bigger than one. So you always want to go back and check out your solutions. Just to give you a tip, just a hint for when you would want to do this, that would be when you have x on the non-absolute value side. Because maybe the value for x that you find makes this part negative. That's a little hint. When would I check for extraneous solutions? Are there any times that I don't need to do that? Yeah, you don't need to when it's just equal to some number. But if it's equal, if the absolute value of, of something is equal to something with x in it, then you gotta check it. You gotta, yeah, check it out. Check out those solutions. So, let's just show you one more thing, and then uh, <coughs> that'll be that. How is this different from all the other equations we've done so far? 
guys really bad. It's not a constant or something. They've all been equal to something. It's not a constant. There's a couple of seven outside. Oh, so there's a outside there's something the outside the value. absolute value on the side with the absolute value. Yeah. Usually it's been absolute value really? equals. Can we fix it? Yeah. How do we fix it? Minus subtract seven. Subtract seven, seven from both sides. Three x plus five equals. Uh, Is that four? Uh, yeah. Really five. Bad at the five. 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 <laughs> oh, sorry. Absolute value of three x plus five equals five. Then 3x plus 5 equals 5, 3x plus 5 equals negative 5, it's all correct. How about this one? Uh, 2x minus 3 plus 9 equals 1. Minus 9. So, 2x minus 3 absolute value equals 1. Mm -hmm. Is that the right Not possible. I shouldn't even bother. It's not like you can say this could be five, like negative five or five. It doesn't work that way. You can't take an absolute value and wind up with a negative. So what do we say about this equation? It's impossible. It's impossible. Or in math terms, there's no solution. It's not possible to take the absolute value and get a negative value. So we don't even bother. We just say it's not possible. There's no solution to this equation. So what's the absolute value of the one on the left? Do you ever do you solve that? Or no? Can we solve Is that this? How it's left? Yeah. No, I mean, I'm just I just set it up to be, you know, to how take the next step. That? This one. Left. This one. Yeah. You just go. Well, if this stuff is five, if that equals five, yeah, that works. Or if this comes out to be negative five, when I take the absolute value of negative five away five, and so I just solve both of these equations. Then always I, well, no, do I need to check it? No. <coughs> I don't really need to check it. The only time that I might wind up with no solutions is if it's possible for this side to come out negative. Well, that's not possible because this side is just fine. So I'm going to figure out what, what it takes for x to be, what it takes for x to make this 5, and what it takes for x to make this negative 5. And there will be some number that will do the trick. And uh, was, when I take the absolute value of that expression, I'll get positive 5. Every time. All right, you good? Um.